Oh, <laughs> hello. Excuse me. I, I didn't expect you so soon. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Galen. Now, I'm so glad you could join me today. It is a marvelous story you're going to see. I remember it as it was yesterday. Your spaceship shooting out of the heavens. Oh, what a shock it must have been to discover what the world had come to. <laughs> what a shock it was for me, too. Heavens knows. Uh, yeah, well, but, uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So let us go back and see what it was like. Back to the planet of the apes. Such interesting creatures, your broken burden, and in such a fix. Oh, not to mention the fact that I was up to here my, myself. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, bird track down there with that beast Urko. I never did like him, you know, not even one little bit. Yeah, but I suppose we all feel trapped in our world at some time or another. So much to do, so little time in which to do it. But let us see tomorrow, shall we? How much time Burke may have. It was nice of you to come and spend some of your time with me. Until tomorrow, then. <laughs> hey, uh, I was expecting you today. I'm fully prepared for the afternoon. Now, won't you join me? A story, yes, of course. Now, if, if you remember, my astronaut friends, Verdon and Burke, are in quite a fix, you see. Yes, marooned a thousand years in the future. By, by their time, of course. Hunted by my fellow apes seeking some silly computer to repair their flying machine and now trapped by that horrible creature Urko. Well, let's see what happens, shall we? In the forgotten city of the planet of the apes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, poor Burke and Verdon. All those years of training in your world of technology only to be thrust into one of savage barbarity. It's quite inhuman, isn't it? Mm. Well, there I was doing my best to help. My youthful enthusiasm. Yeah, I wonder what's to become of them. Don't you? Of course, uh, it's all history to me now, but then they say that history has a way of repeating itself. Shall I see you tomorrow, then? Good. getting easier for me to remember your arrival. Mm. Oh, I do so look forward to our visits. Yeah, much more than I looked forward to helping our astronaut friends, I'm afraid. Well, at the risk of my very own life, I might add. Burke and Burden captured their precious computer disk stolen and Urko on our trail. Goodness, I just, oh. And then, when we least expected that, well, at, uh, I had never seen such treachery and greed on the planet of the apes. Oh. <laughs> I was quite an operator back then, wasn't I? <laughs> and all for a couple of humans. Uh, you know the odds we were against us? Oh, yes. It's only a matter of time, I'm afraid. And poor dear burden for him. Oh, a matter of life and death. What we all went through for the want of an electronic brain, much less fascinating than the real thing, if you ask me. I do hope that you will be back tomorrow. There's so much more I want to show you. And you would. <laughs> Marvelous, isn't it? The human body, how it's evolved. <laughs> oh, personally, I never tire of its complexity. I suppose it all started with Verdon and Burke in that hospital. Oh, you remember, Verdon's escape from that horrible castle and Urko, and then being shot by his gorillas. Oh, we had no choice but to go to my friend at that hospital. And then I had to steal Dr. Sayers' book on human anatomy. Why, well, it was, a, it was a matter of life, liberty, and pursuit on the planet of the apes. Oh, isn't it a fine kettle of fish poor Verdon and Burke find themselves in now? And with nothing but their wits to depend on. And me, back in that musty cave, knowing the worst had happened, well, which of course it had. Well... What do you expect from such headstrong humans? <laughs> yeah, and their empty-headed chimpanzee friend, I suppose. But then what I had to go through to try and get them out, why, well, oh, that, that was quite an adventure. Well, I I'll see you tomorrow, then, for the final chapter. <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful, marvelous, you're here. <laughs> uh, little projects do help one pass the time, don't they? 
I'm almost finished with mine. Alas, I'm afraid that our time is nearly at an end, too. And here we are, Burke and Verdon, not any closer to home than they were before. Nothing but fish catchers in that horrible work camp. Yeah. Depending upon the uh, inferior intelligence of their ape companion. <laughs> yeah. Now, what would your Charles Darwin say to that in our farewell to the planet of the apes? <coughs> and there you have it. And there you have it. Verdon and Burke, oh, well, they found their computer in another city and disappeared into space as suddenly as they had arrived. What about me? Mm, I certainly could have gone with them. Back to your time, your world, uh, where apes are kept in zoos. Uh, uh, tell me now, would you have come to my world willingly? Hmm? You will, eventually. Of course. It's only a matter of time. The series is different, number one, because the, um, the central character, Galen, is an entirely different uh, individual, indi 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 chimp, <laughs> and uh, so, uh, on a series of, of uh, different adventures. All the attributes of Galen were certainly ones that, as a human being, I would uh, be happy to embrace and only wish I could be. So it was a wonderful skin to be inside. As an actor, it was a, a great gymnasium because inside the character, one got to play other characters. I remember one time having to be disguised as a lady chimp for some escape. When one was first uh, thinking about how these characters would physically be, when he got into the costume, it just didn't seem right to be standing straight up. It just seemed wrong. And suddenly, where the physicalization actually came from, ultimately, was in just walking back and forth and thinking, I suddenly thought of Groucho Marx. You know, he'd walk around with bent legs, you know, and, you know, and it just, when you bent your knees, it just seemed, it felt right. And also fusing from mentally fusing your body from your shoulders to uh, the end of your rump, just keeping it so that you're moving in one piece. That seemed correct, so the spine seemed to... No. That just felt right and felt like an original, you know, some place to be that was somewhere between a human being and a chimpanzee. As an actor, sometimes you get to play roles that really uh, make you want to be a better person or perhaps cause you, in a sense, to be a better person. Certainly the, those characters are in apes or in, in, in that arena. Prejudice, abuse, lack of compassion, all of those things are involved in that material. How we as human beings uh, are prone to these terrible reactions. One of the great things you must understand is that when you're wearing that ape makeup, you never age. As an actor, uh, the opportunity to play um, a chimpanzee doesn't come along very often. <laughs> and it, is, it was a wildly complicated and very rewarding acting assignment because you one couldn't use really quite the normal technique in order to play those roles because you had to convey uh, what you were thinking and feeling through uh, an immense amount of appliance makeup appliance so uh, the thought processes had to be most particular I found it intriguing and the makeup teams that were involved were so extraordinary those men were not only imaginative but so deeply kind so i i also love the fact that children really uh appreciated and loved all of those projects 
There were a lot of them. I wish there'd been more. I was very sad, actually, that the Planet of the Apes TV series did not go on. People used to say to me, oh, you must have been so relieved when it was over because of all the makeup and everything else. But I wasn't at all. I, I really felt that that series not only had something to say, but was highly entertaining, but it was wonderful to be uh, associated with. All of the acting choices were just human because one of the points of uh, these chimpanzees were that they had evolved to um, another level. All one did was play uh, the intent and content of a human being. When you've got that much slap all over you, you really don't have to uh, try and pretend to be a chimpanzee or an orangutan, it's done for you. The first character I played was Cornelius, who was sort of very studious and intellectual. And then uh, Cornelius and Zira, Kim Hunter, we were killed in the uh, third film. And then I played my own son, who was Caesar, which was a character I liked a great deal because that was sort of... Uh, I mounted that really on the idea of a combination of, of Zira and Cornelius, but it was more fun because Zira had much more of a sense of humor. She was much more larky than Cornelius, so he was more fun to play in a sense than, Corn than Cornelius. And then when the television series came along, that character I adored playing because he, uh, Galen, was so full of fun and um, had a tremendous enjoyment of things. It was, it was very inventive and, and uh, great fun to do. I like Galen the best. The stories are so terrific. They're very important pieces. I think they, they say something that is uh, quite potent and valuable. It's about 20 years since the last uh, of the series was made. They're just as uh, relevant and potent now. They always will be. I think one of the most attractive aspects of the Planet of the Apes uh, canon uh, was the optimism involved and the decency of the message. Galen actually was sort of an everyman or every chimp, you know. Uh, he, he was a chimp of extremely good character and uh, full of value, good motives. All of this area of work is, uh, can be very dangerous because the moment you're dealing with, with uh, makeups and costumes that are uh, blinding, you know, put blinders on your vision or uh, costumes that are complex and make your movements, you know, then it, you, you can, it's very easy to have accidents. In one of the apes, the horse I was riding, um, a nest of bees bit the horse up the rump and <laughs> it flew up in the air, that horse. I got my feet out of the stirrups but not in time to fl uh, fly off the horse and the horse, I was on the ground with the horse on top of me. Luckily it was in sand. That is the last time <laughs> I decided from then on it was only going to be um, uh, doubles in the work because it was too dangerous. You get wiser as you get older. <laughs>